That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Deep Sky, <laughs> a medium length documentary feature directed by Academy Award nominated Nathaniel Kahn, which IMAX is releasing in select museum locations October 20th, 2023. So we, do you know this director's other work? No, but his first documentary called My Architect, which is about his father, sounds really fascinating. Oh. And he was nominated for that as well as for a short documentary feature called Two Hands, the Leon Fleischer story. So I'm just going to read the premise for this documentary. Uh, it explores the $10 billion JWST's engineering and construction process, historic December 25th, 2021 launch, and the release of its first full-color galaxy-sprinkled images on July 12th, 2022, witnessed by the entire planet. So, what's your pull quote? A straightforward snapshot detailing the enormous amount of effort that went into the creation and launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, this short doc has some surprisingly poetic moments behind its wondrous majesty. Uh, in the words of Moby, people, they come together because we are all made of stars. <laughs> Mine is deep sky is a wondrous glimpse at the vastness of space, but with a 40 minute running time, it only whets your appetite for more. Uh, I, it's spectacular, but also, like, I don't understand the science behind anything I was seeing and having it presented at breakneck speed. Um, really just, I mean, just the construction of the telescope alone with, and the science behind it was super, it was super fascinating and could have been like a 10 part docu-series and then breaking down what the images we received mean, how we interpret them. You know, we get very condensed. Oh Yeah. I mean, it's just, but then that's kind of the beauty of it. It's just remarkable what, like, the human brain can accomplish, like, the science behind, and, and the engineering. But, yeah, I mean, 40 minutes is not enough. And there are often times when I thought, I don't even think the documentary explains what... Who James Jay, Webb is. Jay, yeah, who James Webb is. James Webb was the administrator of NASA from 1961 to 1968. So he oversaw the... Uh, Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs. Mm -hmm. The screening we saw, the director spoke. Mm -hmm. He said that this film should be seen on or in IMAX, which is how we saw it. Um, which I find funny because I really didn't think it needed to be in IMAX. The images from the telescope are not um, sort of collected in a way that is optimal for IMAX. So, and really we're getting a lot of like being, you know, uh, zoomed in, like zoomed in fragments of these images. Um, even we have the gentleman who was the first person to receive the data and break it down to what we see now. And he's looking at it on his little computer screen. So <laughs> I thought that was uh, funny. Well, it's funny because we get a lot of shots, uh, clo close up shots of human heads that seen in IMAX are like, oh, this is extreme. <laughs> and the, yeah. So, the main things that I got from what we were able to collect from the July 1st data is we get the first deep field imagery. So, this, because probably the thing I liked best about, or what I thought worked the best for this format, is there is a little section where the Hubble telescope imagery is compared to the new uh, JWTS imagery and how much better the new telescope is. I thought that was very effective in showing what how we have accomplished. More, yes, that can look beyond all these dust particles, can look even deeper and see uh, a myriad of very colorful uh, multiple universes scattered throughout this, throughout space like that that is fascinating well in you know since i'm not a scientist i'm sure i'm going to say things totally incorrectly but so the deep field imagery shows the the telescope was pointed in an area that allowed us to see like deeper into space and we see that there are like even more universes if that's the correct term but it was just remarkable like well, and then kind of narrows that down into this, this, and the, this director has another documentary from 2021 called The Hunt for Planet B, but very much that, like, is there the, the continually the search for other life, but also is there another rocky planet like Earth that would sustain life? 
Then we see something called Stefan's Quintet, which mm -hmm. appears to be like five galaxies mm -hmm. that are... Four, four or five? Well, does Quintet mean five? Oh, sure. Yeah, sorry. Like colliding into one another, mm -hmm. which is insane. Then we see something in our own galaxy, the Milky Way, called the Cosmic Cliffs, mm -hmm. which because it's closer, the imagery is much more vibrant and vivid. And we actually get one of the people who worked on the project talking about it, and she gets emotional. I thought that was a nice moment. Mm -hmm. And then you alluded to... Uh, there is a planet that this telescope was able to capture that has water, which is a big feature, I guess, we're trying to find to see if there's life on other planets. But then they tell us that this planet, the, the temperature is like 1,700 degrees, so it's not appropriate for life. But the unique thing, from what I understood from this telescope, is that it can detect like elements, which is very key in determining like the atmosphere and if it's suitable for life it it's all way above my head but it just is so like astounding to witness just even the first like 10 minutes are the construction of the telescope and how it has to be built in a very specific way just to even get it up into space mm -hmm. and then when it's released and how every moment of every piece being unfolded because it's almost like origami like if one thing goes wrong the entire mission could just be trash. And there were many way points of uh, pl places in time where it could have gone wrong. Well, and they say most missions like this, I guess like most telescopes we send up into space, they only have like 12 stops. Mm -hmm. And this telescope had like 300 plus 344. Stop, something crazy. So it's just remarkable, like the engineering and the science that went into and it. And then they hint at the next place that I think they're exploring is this galaxy that has... Uh, rocky planets, and uh, three or four of which are uh, situated in a way that that look very hopeful to to these scientists. Yes, that they may be ideal for life. And the one thing it doesn't explain is we keep saying life, but like suitable for life for like humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, and a lot of the uh, uh, some terminology that comes up a couple times is the term species, which I think is funny because another thing that Lil White Michelle Williams is narrating this for us and she, uh, what is repeated and what was in my poll quote is about how we're all made of kind of recycled stardust. Stardust, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, so th this fact that this is important for the species, like humankind, mankind to move forward uh, is interesting. And especially as the director introduced it as like all, all of the terrible things going on, you know, around us right now this is kind of the hope for the future it was really inspiring to see all of the people who worked on this immense project which we're told took 20 years ten thousand people and it was a project between 14 different countries but we see uh people of color women a lot of women like it just really is inspiring to see these people accomplish something that it just seems so i just keep thinking the word remarkable like, how do we even do this? Because it is, yeah. Uh, it, and it was supposed to launch in 2011. So that's how many delays they've had in the construction uh, of this telescope. In the opening, uh, we hear people say that this is not something that we needed to do. We wanted to do it because we want to see what's out there. And I, I think those are beautiful words. But then I, in the end, I'm just left feeling like we're so hungry to find like life outside of our planet instead of taking care of our own but then we're not nice to each other <laughs> just you know like i got emotional watching it because it is I, I was so proud of everyone involved like i can't believe that i'm a part of the same species as the people who did this and and, and i'm sure all the, the scientists and engineers and everyone who was involved aren't like this but i just think in day-to-day -day life it's like if people looked at at the bigger picture. At the bigger picture, we're so small. Well, and in the we big really, scheme of and things. we really are all connected. Yeah, I mean so literally. We, it would behoove us to take care of each other and the planet. Uh, but you know, the thing about looking outward for answers is that the we what we might find, I think, is the hope of many scientists in a very rudimentary way that that will finally allow us down here to have that epiphany. Sure.
Um, I would highly recommend seeing this. I don't know that it, you know, we, we saw it at Exposition Park and, you know, parking there is super expensive and I don't know what a ticket costs. I don't know that it needs to be seen on IMAX. I mean, if you can stream it on your iPad, I think that would be cool too, but I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, for sure. And if, you know, space interests you at all. At the screening we were at, there were a lot of families with children. I don't know that how interesting it would have was to to the children. Yeah, because they were talking like they need to go potty, they were hungry. Yeah, they I, were, I, don't, I don't think it was captivating enough for a child. It's not, yeah, it's not at, uh, I'd say this is like a 101 level course film, but at the same time for children, this isn't something you'd bring to your kid at the planetarium. Also, obviously, the segment where we see the telescope unfold into space is like computer generated. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, I mean, I guess it's cool to see how it would have worked, but yeah, I, what would you give this? Three. I would give it three out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.